What's up everybody? This video is number two and the updates on Comet Panstars. Um, I wanted to make this video because now we're only just a few days away before this comet uh, makes its appearance in the northern hemisphere, um, which everybody's been waiting for, but just a few more days, sit tight and it'll be here. Um, the current status, well, over the past few days the comet has been brightening, which is good, very encouraging. Uh, a lot of the observation reports and the new pictures that I've seen on the internet are really good. Uh, it has made that transition into naked eye visibility. I think uh, the current estimate on the magnitude is somewhere between 2 and 2.5. Um, but the trend in brightening over the last few days definitely suggests that it will get even brighter as time progresses, especially when it uh, comes close to perihelion. And uh, perihelion is basically uh, the closest point that this comet will get to the sun. Um, some observing highlights, some dates to keep in mind. Um, March 5th, it'll be the closest distance to the Earth at around 1.1 uh, astronomical units. Um, one astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun on average. It's about 93 million miles, so a little bit uh, further away than the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Um, probably won't be quite visible yet for the northern hemisphere uh, on that date, but starting March 7th is when it should start to become visible. Um, it's going to be really low on the, on the horizon, so those who live in the lower northern uh, latitudes, maybe around latitude 30, 35, you'll probably have a better chance to spot it earlier. Um, but you're still going to need a really, uh, really flat, unobstructed view of the western horizon if you want to see it. Um, March 10th is when it will reach perihelion, and it will be as close to the sun as the planet Mercury is, which is about... Uh, I think 28 million miles. Um, it will be the brightest and most active at that time. And by then it should be visible for everybody in the northern hemisphere. But again, it's going to be really low on the horizon, so you're really going to need to, uh, to get a nice unobstructed view to the west. Um, it should brighten considerably, maybe. It might even jump to another magnitude, who knows. Just have to wait and see. Um, and it should develop a really long, that classic long comet's tail. Um, Currently, the tail it does have is pretty nice. We'll go into that in a little bit. Um, March 12th to 13th, uh, that's probably going to be the, the prime time to view, where it's going to be climbing enough out of the, uh, the sun's glow to make it easier to see. And a bonus is that the moon will be in, the, uh, in its waxing crescent phase during that time, and the two are going to be really close together. So. That's going to make some really nice uh, photographic opportunities. So if you can get out there and take some pictures, I definitely would advise that. And uh, it will continue to gain altitude as the month goes on, um, but it will still stay relatively close to the horizon. It will dim a little bit. And I don't think it will actually climb really considerably high in the sky until about April. So we'll just have to see. So there's your observing highlights. Um, like I said, just a couple more days left until this thing becomes visible. Um, you see I have it on Stellarium right here. Got it pulled up. And this is set for uh, the 7th of March. And right around 5.40 in the afternoon looking west. And if I increase the days to the 8th, you see it start to climb a little bit higher. So on the 9th. Oh, on the 10th you see the sun jumps back up. Well that's because we switch over to uh, daylight savings time. So make sure you take that into account when you go out to look for the comet. You're going to want to go out you know, an hour later than you normally would for the past few days um, before daylight saving time. So we'll adjust this to about 640. And you can see it's uh, getting higher on the horizon. And as we continue to go forward in time, it'll jump higher and higher. And let me go back. Here we go. You can see up there, we have the comet, and then here is the moon. So you see those two are going to be really close on the 12th. Um, so if you can get out there and take some pictures, that would be a really nice photographic opportunity. Make for a really nice photograph. But, so that's that. Um, we'll see what happens in the next few days. Of course, you know, with comets, anything can change. So just keep that in mind. But I hope that uh, you guys are successful in, in seeing this comet. Um, 
hopefully this will be a nice uh, precursor, a nice warm-up before the really big one, Kama Aisan, comes in uh, November. So um, we'll just have to see what happens. All right, guys, so before I close out, um, I want to show you something real fast. Um, this particular diagram I've made is based on the current photographs that I've seen in the comet. Um, and I told you earlier in the video that it has a pretty nice tail, but actually it has three types of tails, and I wanted to show you those real fast. Um, the first one is a type 1, which is basically an ion tail. It's just a stream of charged particles um, that's flowing uh, in the opposite direction of the sun, because the solar wind is blowing those, uh, those light, you know, charged particles directly behind the comet. So it's always using the straight line away from the sun. Uh, the second type is the type 2 tail, which is the most prominent kind. Um, that you're probably familiar with. Um, and it's basically just a dust tail. All the dust from the nucleus is being blown off by the solar wind and back. And because the dust particles are heavier than the ions in the ion tail, um, they get blown back. They also kind of curve with the, uh, kind of with the direction of the comet. Um, and then the, the third type of tail is the, uh, it's a dust tail as well, but it's a heavier uh, type of dust. Um, it's a little bit fainter than the Type 2. Uh, maybe it, it might brighten over the next few days. Uh, who knows? But um, anyway, so I want to you know, let you know uh, what you might be taking a look at once the comet does make its appearance. Um, the ion tail is usually pretty dim. Um, you may not be able to see that. Naked eye, you might not be able to see it with binoculars, but maybe with a telescope. Uh, the Type 2 tail, you'll have no problem seeing. Um, the Type 3. Um, may require a telescope, but we'll have to see what happens. But Well, there you go. Um, of course, our, our lucky key dates, March 5th, 7th, 10th, 12th, and 13th, uh, what you can expect to happen. And um, like I said, anything can change at any time. The comet could get brighter, you know, could get dimmer. We'll just have to see. But all right, well, thanks for watching. Um, I wish you guys good luck in, in finding the comet. Remember to, uh, to start looking toward the west on the 7th uh, as soon as the sun starts setting. Uh, get out there and take a look, and you know maybe we'll, we'll be all be surprised, and Pan Stars will put on a really good show for us. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Clear skies.